Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you a story of tension and heroism. Fragile Contents Death. Starring Mr. Paul Douglas. Before our play begins, here is a word about Autolite from our good friend, Harlow Wilcox. Hello, Harlow Wilcox. Why, it's Oscar, the orating auto. As gay as a giddy gazelle since you told my owner. <laughs> about ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs? Yep, I was down in the hood. Sluggy, slow on the hills, no pep. But then they slipped you a set of smooth, sleek, and salubrious, world-famous Autolite spark plugs. And now I'm really right. Well, sure, replacing worn-out spark plugs with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs will give smoother performance, quick start, gas savings. I get a real run for the money. Now, well, that's because Autolite spark plugs are made by the same Autolite specialists who designed the coil, distributor, and all the other important parts of the complete ignition systems used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars. That means they're ignition engineered to perform in perfect precision with your car's complete ignition system. They're divine, and they're mine. Your car will love them too, friends. Have your neighborhood Autolite spark plug dealer replace worn-out spark plugs with world-famous ignition engineered Autolite spark plugs. And whether you choose the standard type or the resistor type, in accordance with specifications of the manufacturer of your car, you'll be right, because you're always right with Autolite. And now with Fragile Contents Death and the performance of Mr. Paul Douglas, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. All it took was a phone call. Until it came that morning, everything at the post office was the same as it had always been. I was just another postmaster, 40 years old, with the problems of some 80,000 people to look after. All it took was that phone call to make things a nightmare. As I said, the day was, well, just the day. I remember I was making up my mind to get busy on the stuff piled on my desk. It was 9.15. Morning, Mr. Jordan. Morning, Hartley. I was just going to send for you. Now, don't tell me that all this this heap is for me. That's right. Well, didn't anybody weed it out? Oh, it's been weeded, Mr. Jordan. Oh, no. Well, if I must, I must. Well, even a parcel, I see. And it's marked personal. Hmm, from Paxton and Brown, something or other Broadway, New York City. Hmm, something Alice ordered? Oh, I remember. Sure, this must be that new type of lawn sprinkler I ordered. I should have had it sent to the house. Put it over there, would you? I'll, I'll take it along with me when I go home. Oh, uh, here? Yeah, that's fine. Post office, this is Jordan. Jordan? That postmaster Jordan? That's right. What can I do for you? Plenty. You got a bomb someplace in the mail down there. What? Hey, is this a joke? This is no joke. Listen carefully. A guy I know sent another guy a bomb, a time bomb. It'll be delivered here in town. It was supposed to be set to go off at 7 tonight, but it ain't. He forgot to change the timer before he shipped it. It's set for 2.30 this afternoon, five hours from now. I don't like that. Maybe some poor guy like a mailman will get it instead of the guy who's supposed to. That's why I'm telling you about it. you got to fight it and stop it. Yeah, and another thing. It's fixed so it'll go off when you open the package. You got all that? Sure, I got it, but, well, how do I recognize this bomb? Who's it addressed to? I ain't telling who sent it. I don't care about who sent it. Who gets it? Who gets it? I... Hello. Hello, don't hang up on me. Who gets the bomb? Don't hang up. Look, you're still there. I can hear you breathing. Hello. Hello. He hung up. Hartley. Y yes, sir? You probably heard enough of that to know what's going on. Yeah, something about a bomb in the mail. Yes. Now, listen carefully. I'm only going to tell you once. Get out of here on the double. I want the assistant superintendent of mails and the dispatcher, Stuart and Fox. Get them in here as quick as you can. Got that? Uh, yes, sir. All the help I can get. Operator. Now, this is Jordan. How many inspectors are in today, do you know? Just a moment, Mr. Jordan. Mr. Williams is in. Mr. Jackson left word that he'll be out in Lincoln County until tomorrow. Mr. Thompson entered the hospital this morning to have his appendix out. One out of three. I suppose I should be thankful for that much. But what, Mr. 
Mr. Jordan? Uh, ring Ed Williams for me, please. Tell him to get over to my office right away. It's urgent. Yes, sir. All the possibilities. Have you sent for me? Yes, Foxy. Sit down. Something wrong? Plenty. Bomb in the mail. Know much about it? I'll tell you later. Williams and Stewart are on the list, too. Man, are we in for a busy day. Oh, Hartley said there was a hurry-up call in here, so I can't excuse the loose well, collar. Well, forget it, will you? Hey, I... practically close that door in my face, Joe. Morning, everybody. Sit down, you two. Oh, Sit down oh, and yeah. listen, will you? <laughs> Uh-oh, no raises this year. <laughs> I've been waiting for him to spring it on us. Now, button it up, Joe. Here's what we do have staring us in the face. I just told Fox a minute ago, there's a bomb in the mail someplace. A bomb? Holy... That's right, that's right. A few minutes ago, I got a phone call. I don't know who it was. All I got were these facts. It's now, well, 9.30. Well, between now and 2.30, we've got to find a time bomb which was mailed to somebody here in town. Somebody? Don't, don't have any name at all? He didn't get around to that. Either he wouldn't tell me or he was cut off. I'm hoping, just a slender hope, I know, but I'm hoping he'll call back. We can't count on it. How do we know this isn't a leg pull, Doug? We don't, but we can't afford to take chances with somebody's life. Would you? No. Well, what kind of a package? We don't know any kind. Oh, that's great. That spread your field out something terrific. How? You not only have your truck packages, you have carrier packages, too. Well, a carrier wouldn't have that big a package. Use your head. The powerful explosives we have nowadays and the small wiring circuits possible, why not? Yeah, that's right. Well, I'll give you another. How about a newspaper roll? That's big enough, isn't it? Carriers handle them, don't they? That's right. Well, here's what I think. If that thing was mailed early this morning, it's either out there in the parcel post bin or at one of the substations. If it was mailed last night, it's probably on one of the trucks right now. Or else it's been delivered. Or else it's been delivered, yes. A lot of stuff's off the trucks by now. Well, that complicates it, but let's do what we can as fast as we can. Fox. You round up all of the special delivery cards. Send them out after those trucks and get all packages back here. We'll go over them after they get here. Try to get the drivers to remember what's been delivered and where. Skip the insured deliveries. This won't be insured. And get as much back as you can. What if they can't remember everything? Leave that to me. But do this, too. Call the substations. Get all their stuff in here. Will do. Anything else? Not now. I'm on my way. Stuart, go through our own stuff in the back. Let me see. Delivery from the New York Central's number three hasn't come over from the station yet, has it? No. Now, that makes it a little better. Now, get everything we've got together in one place and keep it there. Now, keep the out-of-town packages out of it. Just add the stuff from the substations and the trucks as it comes in. And the pickup trucks, of course. What? Well, some of the drop boxes out in the suburbs are for letters and parcels both. We'd get some packages coming in on the pickups from those boxes. Yes, I'd forgotten that. Yeah, the trucks will be in here by 11. Well, might as well go ahead with everything else until they get here. Yeah, just so we get them as soon as they come in. I'll leave that to you. Yeah, if we're going to do all this, I, I better get on it. No use standing here any longer than necessary. No, no, no. Go on. Go ahead. You uh, want me to check the packages, right? I don't have to tell you your business, Ed. I know your record as an inspector. Well, fill in a little more for me, would you, Doug? Okay. There's a time bomb? Well, that's what he said. We have less than five hours now. I got that. What else about it? Uh, would it be safe to open? No, no, it'll it'll go off if you open it. He said so. It's rougher and rougher. Well, I'm going to get help, Doug. All you want. I use your phone. Help yourself. Thanks. Operator. Outside line, please. Thank you. Oh, Rocky, this is Ed Williams, post office. Is Jesse in today? Yeah, one. No, no, don't call him. No time. Uh, tell him to come on over here right away, would you? Sure. What do you want with explosives experts? You got a bomb? Well, maybe. Uh, keep it under your hat. You know me. Oh, another thing, Rocky. You got uh, the uh, fluoroscope just now? Mm, touchy one, huh? No, we loaned it to Company E up on four. Well, I could use it, that's for sure. It's only about 100 miles. I'll call them up and get them to fly it in. Probably get it to you in a... An hour or a little over. Good. And uh, you'll tell Jesse? Will do. Oh. <sighs> now to work, Doug. Same here, boy. How about those carriers? About a hundred of them, aren't there? Ninety-four. Oh, can you do it? Can you hit them all? I don't know. All I can do is try. I'll bet you're thinking of the same thing I am, remembering the same case. Bowling Green, Kentucky? Yeah. That poor devil of a carrier, alive but barely. 
That's one reason I want to find this bomb before our luck runs out. We're going to see that it doesn't run out. I hope you're right, Ed. I sure hope you're right. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Paul Douglas in Fragile Contents Death. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Harlow, you know what we cars always say? No. What, Oscar Otto? There's no business like go business. Right, you are. And what a go you get with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. That's because they're precision-made and world-famous for quality and dependability. You bet. So when worn-out spark plugs are replaced with new ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, you'll get smoother performance and quick starts. And they'll save gas, too. Sure, because Autolite spark plugs are ignition-engineered to work in perfect coordination with your car's ignition system. They're designed by the same Autolite experts who design the coil, distributor, and all the other important parts of the complete ignition system used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars. Autolite spark plugs are ignition engineered. You said a tank full, Oscar. So, friends, have your neighborhood Autolite spark plug dealer replace your car's worn-out spark plugs with ignition engineered Autolite spark plugs, standard or resistor type. And remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Paul Douglas in Elliot Lewis's production of Fragile Contents Death, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. They were all on it now. Williams, Fox, Stewart, and all the others we could trust to keep a cool head. The lid was on every place possible. The average man buying his three-cent stamp, it was business as usual. We didn't even let the majority of the help know it. But off in one of our fairly isolated corners, a pile of packages was growing. I looked at the clock. 10.20. Just about an hour gone. Four hours left. Stu, how are things going? Well, well, who knows? Well, as can be expected in a thing like this, I suppose. Uh, better wipe off that sweat before somebody tumbles. You know, the day isn't that hot. Oh, well, thank you. Are uh, many of them wise yet? I don't think so, yet. Well, we'll probably get out. You know, things have a way. Yeah, that they do. Uh, how are you standing at yourself? Well, uh, uh, Worried? Well, I'm not very happy. Happy? Well, none of us are. Yeah, I keep thinking... Uh, what if I get hold of the thing when... Uh, uh, have you ever been in an explosion? No. Well, you weren't in the service, no. Ever see an explosion and been close to one? Mm, yeah, well, I came by once just after a gasoline truck tangled with a pole and took off. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Mm-hmm, I see. Uh, Joe, would you like to take the day off? Oh, no, no, I wouldn't think well, of no, that. Well, wait a minute. Nobody'd blame you, really. I wouldn't. No, I, I promise no, you. I can't do that, Doug. What if I did and the thing got by and I could have prevented it? I'm nervous, maybe. Uh, I don't like the setup, maybe, but but I'm not chicken. I'm staying with it. I didn't suppose you wouldn't stay with it, Joe. Well, they say every soldier figures that the next bullet isn't going to get him. Huh? That's the way I'm figuring myself on this deal. Good idea. The only thing we have to worry about, where is this one aimed? Eleven thirty. Two hours gone. I went back to the mail room. Hello, Doc. How's it going? We have all this so far. A lot of work. Uh, any leads, Ed? Not yet. Not even anything suspicious. Well, how can you tell? Can't tell, really. Oh, sometimes there's something about the handwriting or the printing. I guess you just feel it sometimes. I don't know. I don't get anything like that in this stuff. No. Oh. Well, not even a, a fake return address. Not a one in the lot. None of the locals, anyway. Put them all. Horoscope in yet? Oh, plane's in. They phoned me a few minutes ago. It's on the way over. Be here any minute. That's a help. Mr. Jordan, telephone. Okay, what line? Eight. Thanks. I'll get it. 
This is Jordan. Mr. Jordan, this is Malloy on truck 15. Yes, yeah, Malloy. I got the word about getting back these packages. Everything's practically okay, only this. My second delivery, I left one off at this place, 1724 Lime Street. I got back there a while ago, nobody's home. They were there when you left the package? Yeah. Fat, bald-headed guy took it, as I remember. Well, check the neighbors. I already have, Mr. Jordan. Nobody knows for sure where they went. There's some talk about them leaving for Washington this morning, but I can't pin it down. Uh, they drove, anyway. Car's gone, garage is empty. Mm, well, that's using your head, Malloy. At least we have something to shoot at. Remember the name? No, I don't. But that fat guy sure looked like a crook. Tabbed him for one the minute I laid hey, my... what's this? Huh? Oh, oh, oh. Miller came driving out and caught me and said you were hunting a package of stolen goods in the mail. Uh, maybe he shot his mouth too much, huh? Wasn't I supposed to know? Oh, no, no, Malloy. It's, it's all right. I, I forgot that he knew what we were after. You say you got everything else. Yeah. Be right in if you say so. You do that. Check. Foxy. Yeah? Look up 1724 Lime Street and get the name. Anything else? Get that name and then get on it to the state police to intercept them if possible. Those people who received the package this morning and they may have left town for Washington. They're probably driving. By luck, they may not have opened that parcel yet. It's a long shot. Going on a trip carrying an unopened package? I doubt it. It's against common sense, but we have to try. You try, Foxy. Twelve o'clock. Lunchtime. I ordinarily eat at Bailey's. Not today. We had sandwiches and coffee brought in. The coffee was welcome, but we didn't seem very hungry. Alone in my office, sipping coffee, all I could think about was the time was half gone. It made me forgetful. This is Jordan. Haven't you forgotten something? Huh? Oh, hello, dear. Forgotten something? I'm down at Bailey's waiting for you. I've been here 25 minutes. We're lunching together today, remember? Oh, well, that's right. Today is Thursday. Well, uh, look, Alice, I'm afraid I'm going to have to stand you up. Uh, You'll something's be sorry. come up. sorry. There's the best looking man sitting in here all by himself. Tall, rugged, iron gray type. You know how I go for those. He'd probably be glad to buy me a meal. Yeah, try him and see. I have confidence in you, sweetheart. Anything to save us a buck. <sighs> then you definitely aren't coming. Uh, I'm afraid not. I'll tell you all about it tonight. Sometime, remind me never to marry a busy executive again. Bye. Bye. What have you got there, Foxy? Things on my mind, Doug. First, let me get this one off. The cops picked up the Morgans. The Morgans? The couple who were driving to Washington found them in a service station on the edge of town. You get the package? They'd already opened it. Nothing much in it except some fancy sports shirts for Morgan himself. Well, they're on their way again? With apologies. Understand they were scared silly. Morgan offered to show the cop the shirts. He even wanted to give them one. Afraid they were stolen goods. Well, I'm glad that's cleaned up. Just had a call from the Woodmount branch. Go on. Remember Spicer? Who? S Spicer? Yes, yes. Suspicion of robbing the mails. What about him? Looks as though he's hung one on himself this time. Well, how's that? Well, as I say, this clerk out at uh, Woodmount put a bunch of packages in the bins just before he quit last night. He remembered one for Dr. Turner. This Turner, it seems, collects magazine first editions. Sometimes these aren't worth insuring, sometimes they are. They're always worth something more than their original price. This package looked like one of those. What about the carrier, Spicer? Seems he blew in just as the place was about to close. That he forgot a bag of his with some new shoes he'd bought. He drifted through and out again. Nobody paid any attention at their time. And this morning, Turner's package is gone, is that it? Where's Spicer? His day off, substitute's working. They're sure the package is gone? Well, Turner called to ask her to come, and they couldn't trace it. That's how they were sure it was missing. I don't have to tell you the next move, do I? Already tried. Called his rooming house. He's not in. Didn't come in last night either. Do I call the police? Mm, I'd better do that, Foxy. Thanks. Even if he has the thing. He's surely opened it by now. I think so myself, but we, we can't be sure. We we can't take chances. I'd better call. Operator. Get me the police station. Ed, any luck with this pile of stuff? One that's uncertain. Trying to make up my mind. Let's so. Let's see. Here. Uh, not very big. Oh, well, it wouldn't have to be. 
Addressed to Jack Gordon, 128 Andrew Street. Is that anybody important? Never heard the name. If you ask me, it's a kid. And so why? Well, the return address. Oh, Columbia Foods Incorporated. I don't Cereal know. Serial coupons. Fluoroscope indicates a watch inside. Furthermore, let's put a stethoscope on it. Here, put it in your ears. Okay. Ah, you get it? Yeah, it ticks all right. Question, is it a dollar watch or or is it it? Mm, it's a watch, probably. Probably. Look, let's play it safe. That's what I thought. In here? Ordinarily, no. But we couldn't detect anything that would trigger the thing, so we'll put her in the water bucket. Here. Did you put the wedding agent in the water? Yeah. It'll soak through the wrapping quicker. And through anything else inside that much faster. Ah, that does it. The inside takes a little longer. Mm. Reminds me of the time I put in as an inspector. I, uh, I hear you're pretty good, Doug. Just lucky. Getting the walkers lucky? <laughs> well, better have a look at your toy here. Yeah. Easy, easy. Oh, she comes. There. Oh, looks like we were right the first time, Doug. Here, have a pocket watch. Genuine hoppy. Keep it for a souvenir. That's one kid we owe a watch. Will the budget stand it? It'll strain it, but it won't break it. Let's step out back. I need a cigarette. Good idea. You heard about this carrier, Spicer? Ah, uh, Foxy told me. Got him yet? No, the police haven't. Maybe the police haven't got him, but has it? <laughs> The clock's hands were still going around. 1.30. Just about one hour to go, and still we hadn't found that bomb. We hadn't found it. We hadn't found the missing carrier. All we found was a new headache every few minutes. This is Jordan. Mr. Jordan, this is Malloy again. The driver, you know. Oh, yes, Malloy. Do you have something new? Sort of. See, Mr. Jordan, is like this. While I was eating lunch, I kept thinking. And all of a sudden, I remember this other package I delivered this morning out on Peach Ave. So I drive over here to see about it. Uh, I'm at the house now. You got the package? Have they opened it? No, oh, it ain't open, but... Uh... Well, you better talk to this lady, Mr. Jordan. She won't listen to me. Here, Mrs. Bates, this is the postmaster on the line, himself in person. Hello. This driver said you're the postmaster. Is that right? That's right. This is Douglas Jordan. Well, I don't understand all this about the package which came from my husband. First this man delivers it, and now he wants it back. He's uh, perfectly right, Mrs. Bates. We'd very much like to have that parcel. Well, I don't see why. It has my husband's name on it. It's the correct address. Well, uh... I'm afraid that I can't get it back until my husband has a chance to examine it. What did our uh, driver tell you, Mrs. Oh, Bates? he had some story about stolen goods, but that doesn't make sense. Well, you see... Anyone would know that my husband would never... Uh, someone may have confused him with another Bates. Have you thought of that? No, I hadn't. But I am still sure that my husband should pass judgment on this but if, if you... I were to take the responsibility, and I were wrong. Well, let me take the responsibility, Mrs. Bates. He might not see it that way. He might say I let myself be talked into something. Uh, Mrs. Bates, believe me, I'm sure your husband would be the first to thank us if he knew... Well, well, on my word of honor, we must have that package. Well, it's your responsibility. Do you understand? Here, young man. Thank you, lady. But I don't think my husband will thank you. He doesn't like anyone connected with the government. None of you. For that, I'm sorry, Mrs. Bates, but thank you for giving us that parcel. One hour. Please, let this one be it. <laughs> But it wasn't what we were after. A box of advertising pencils, that was all. Then it was a half an hour. I forced myself to stay in my office, waiting for a call that they'd caught Spicer, or that someone, somewhere, had turned up something. Ed, any luck? Not a bit. We've combed everything, not a thing. They haven't caught up with Spicer yet? I think that's a false lead anyway. If he has the thing, he's opened it by now. Uh. 
That leaves us nowhere. Yes, it does. Somebody's forgotten something. That must be it. Maybe. It'll be all a hoax, you know. What's the matter? Don't you want it to be a hoax? All this effort and nothing to show for it. That it? Want to repeat the Walker business? Catch a murderer through the mail? No, no, Ed, no. I just want to be sure. He's out, you know. Who? Steve Walker, the brother. He's out of jail. Didn't you know? Why are you looking so funny? Steve. Walker. Steve. He said he'd get me. Ah, well, so what? Where did I put it? Where did I... Where's that lawn sprinkler? Lawn sprinkler? Now I know. Hey, where'd that package come from? I had it right here all day. Didn't even think about it. Came early this morning. Let's not think. Let's move. Give me that. Is there time? I think so. Better be. Hey, Jesse, got another one. Fluoroscope. Yeah. Get her under the fluoroscope. Look. That's her brother. That's her, all right. Do you have time to take it out to a safe place? No, sir. All we can do is put her in the water bucket. Take her into the alley and pray. Okay. Here goes. Oh, water. Get through that wrapper. Jesse, get her out of here. Doug, we'll give her an hour just in case. Five minutes. Fifteen minutes. Thirty minutes. Forty-five minutes. One hour. Well, Doug, there she is, all in little pieces. Be glad those pieces aren't you. I am, Ed. Believe me, I am. Pretty good collection of evidence. You can go after Steve Walker with this, Doug. Mr. Jordan, telephone. Coming. On four. Got it. This is Jordan. I couldn't bear the thought of you plodding away down there. Maybe you'd like to hear about my luncheon, dear. It was the most exciting. But it better be good. Wait till you hear the one I thought up for you. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Paul Douglas. Harlow, I've got a new slogan for you. What is it, Oscar? Keep your auto right with Autolite. Yes, sir, because Autolite makes over 400 fine products for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants from coast to coast. These include complete ignition systems used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars. Generators, coils, distributors, electric windshield wipers, voltage regulators, wire and cable, starting motors, and many, many more. They're all engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So, friends, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. And remember, you're always right with Autolite. Next week on Suspense, Mr. Fred McMurray in Windy City Six, featuring the Dixieland music of Red Nichols and his five pennies. This to be followed by the first lady of Suspense, Miss Agnes Moorhead. Then on February 22nd, in answer to your many requests, Backseat Driver, repeated for you with its original stars, Fibber McGee and Molly, all on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Bluskin. Portions of this program were transcribed. You can buy Autolite Stayful batteries, Autolite Standard Type or Resistor Type spark plugs, Autolite Electrical Parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. Nearly half of the people who died in America last year were victims of heart disease, our number one killer. This week, the American Heart Association appeals for your support to combat and conquer this scourge. Send your contributions to Heart, care of your local post office. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.